Okay, let's start. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for Black High to provide this opportunity for me to present our current work. I'm Yao Qi from National University of Singapore. Today, I will show you some very interesting attack. And that is some simple techniques can make very big impact. Okay, first of all, I want to do a quick study. How many of you guys are really care about your geolocations? Please raise up your hands. That means you don't want bad guys to access your geolocations to know where you are now. Yeah, okay, please hand, hands down. Uh, I found that most of you guys really care about your geolocations. Then please pay attention to this talk. It's, yeah, you will get many useful informations from this talk. Now let's watch a video. The video is about how to infer your geolocation without your consent. Okay, just like mo normally we open uh, the Chrome in a private browsing mode, open google.com, and search some keywords like black hat, the events we want to attend, and also some places we want to go and some restaurants we want to go. And uh, next uh, we visit uh, the Craigslist for Singapore. Because we want to check some local news. It takes a longer time. And we visit some local news. And also we can, we can buy or sell some second stuff on the Craigslist websites. And then we may visit uh, Google Maps to search the Maria Bay Sands. Where is, where is our hotel? And just uh, look around uh, the restaurants within this hotel and uh, around this hotel and the events or events are ongoing. Actually, this hotel is very amazing, right? And uh, next, we visit a blog site. Actually, this is my profile site. Uh, <clears throat> from the web page, we don't see anything different from the normal blog website. It's just a best I introduce some information. But when we open the console, and we found this website is running some code, keep running some code. It's like profiling some information from the browser. So just keep running the code and profiling the information. So what's the code? What does this code do? Is it very uh, harmful to us? And after a while, we found that this website without our consent, they can precisely info our current location. They can info we are in Singapore and we are in Maria Bay Sands. It's amazing, right? So let's switch to the slides. Next, I will show you how this magic happens step by step. So in this talk, I will first introduce the, the background of uh, geolocations in browsers, and uh, how does browser cache work, and also the timing channels exist in our current browsers. And next, I will introduce our amazing attacks via the browser cache. Uh, next, we did some experiments and the evaluations of different websites and browsers, show the prevalence of such attack. Next, we discuss the potential and existing solutions to defeat such attack. And we also provide the demo for the attacks in Tor Browser. The last part is the Q&A session. So let's start. Nowadays, browsers and the websites often access our geolocations to provide customized services. Like when we visit google.com, it will automatically redirect us to the, our country's um, Google's website, like when we visit Google in Singapore. Actually, we visit Google 
uh, I'm sure we will visit Google for Singapore, right? We can see the logo. And similarly, when we visit GoDaddy, it provides country-specific sites for us. Now, like the GoDaddy for Singapore, all the prices in this page are in Singapore dollars, and the services are customized to Singapore ring. So what does these uh, geolocations provide to us? On one hand, allowing browsers and websites to access our geolocations can provide uh, benefits to us. Uh, for example, based on our geolocations, Craigslist can provide city-specific sites for us to buy or sell secondhand stuff in our own cities. And uh, we usually visit Google Maps and we can locate our current places and also search some routes from our place to another place. However, on the other hand, this also introduces some new threats. For example, based on our geolocations, the attacker can track us, can do spear phishing and some targeted attacks to entice us to, um, to expose more private information. Now let's look at uh, a real example. If Google Maps asks for your geolocation, what's your answer? Probably most of you will allow this trusted website to access our, uh, your geolocations because you want to search some places and to locate your current, place, uh, current locations. But if an unfamiliar website, like my blog site or some other new site, these sites, no need, these sites are just uh, um, to provide uh, some uh, news or information to us. We don't want these websites to access our geolocations, to sniff our private information. So for this website, we may click deny to these websites. However, although you say no to me, but, uh, to me, I can still infer your geolocation. When we're talking about geolocations, how do browsers and websites get to know our geolocations? Traditionally, there are three sources. The first one is by user's menu, menu input. For example, there are many websites. They provide forms for us to just uh, input our countries, cities, and the streets. In this way, they can get our, um, our geolocation. And uh, the second way is by the GPS sensors. Currently, most of our mobile devices, iPhone or Android devices, and our laptops support this feature. And uh, the third way is very typical. It's by the IP tracking mechanism. Many popular websites, they set up big databases to map the IP addresses to the user's real geographic locations. And just based on the user's IP addresses, the website uh, can infer the user's uh, location. For trusted websites, we already allow these websites to access our geolocations from any of these three sources. However, for some untrusted websites, we are not willing to manually input our private information to these sites. or allow these sites to access our geolocation GPS sensors, just as I mentioned in the previous slides. So the only source for these websites is by the IP tracking. However, from a recent study, we found that it's not reliable, especially in the mobile devices. The recent study showed that more than 90% of mobile devices in Seattle are not located in Seattle based on the IP tracking mechanism. And also for some hackers like you guys, and some professional users, they usually use VPN or Tor to hide their real IP addresses. Thus, in this way, these websites can't um, get the user's um, geolocation from the IP tracking. What we show you in this talk is for trusted websites, they can get to know our geolocations from the, the traditional sources. But for untrusted websites, they can't. Do you think it is secure enough? Probably not. Since the untrusted website shares the same browser with the trusted websites, so can the attacker info the user's um, geo information from the same browser? 
after this talk, you will know the answer is yes. Next, I will show you some background of the browser cache. So what's browser cache? This figure briefly uh, demonstrates how browser works. When a user visit a website for the first time, the network module will fetch the resources of the page, like uh, HTML, JavaScript, and some uh, images um, from the remote server, and then pass the content to the, uh, to the cache module to store, and to the parser module to pass renderer and display the page to the user. And then when the user visits the same website uh, for the second time, the browser will directly load the cache resources from the cache module. And uh, in this way, the user can feel that it's very quick and all very fast to view the same web page. And um, the website uh, can um, provide better user experience. So how to control the browser cache? There are many directives in HTTP response headers to instruct browsers to cache these resources. For static resources, websites want the browser to store these resources as long as possible. So the website developers can set cache control the max age with a large number. Then this, this directive will instruct the, uh, instruct the browser to store the uh, resources for a long time. However, for some dynamic and uh, sensitive resources, um, <clears throat> the web, website, uh, website developers can set the cache control as no cache. Then this directive will instruct browsers not cache these resources. Currently, for all the mainstream browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, IE, Opera, they all support this feature and the event browser. In reality, what does browser cache store? From our observation, we found that browser cache actually stores the site related states. Like, we, like when we visit google.com, the browser stores the Google's logo and other states into the cache module. And when we visit CreateList, the browser will store the images or products and, uh, and the uh, images in the news into the cache. And when we visit uh, the Google on um, Google Maps, the browser cache will store the uh, map tile images into the browser. Then what does the browser do with these uh, site related states? Modern browsers usually cache these resources to reduce the loading time of the page or the specific resources. For example, when I first visited uh, Google.com, it takes around 1,316 uh, uh, milliseconds. Then the browser cache the image and other states. So when I visit uh, the same page for the second time, it only takes around 320 milliseconds. And the third time is similar. It only takes around 350 milliseconds. So we can see the the big time difference between the loading time without cache and with cache. So the browser cache really helps the browser to reduce the loading time of resources or pages and provide better user experience. However, if a user visits a malicious website, the site can also load the cache resources and measure the time difference and based on the time difference, like the time difference between the, the first time, second time, it's like it's the loading time without cache and with cache. It's quite significant. But if the resource is already cached in the browser, the time difference is quite small. So based on this observation, the attacker can infer the specific resources, whether these resources are cached in the browser or not. Previously, this timing channel is utilized by the researchers and other hackers to infer the user's um, browsing history. So in this work, we show that these timing channels are still open in browsers, and uh, attackers can also utilize such timing channels to infer users' geolocations. 
So when you user visit some geo-oriented websites, like the Google Quicklist and Google Maps, and then visit the malicious website, because the browser's feature, browser cache is shared across all sites, then the malicious website can just mirror loading time of the resources from other sites and determine the cache status of these uh, geo-related resources. Since these resources can reflect the user's uh, geolocation, like Google's logo actually can reflect the user's country. So in this way, the attacker can infer the user's uh, geolocation. So this is the idea how geoinference attacks works. So our attacks actually infer a user's um, geolocation without the user's manual input or accessing the GPS sensors or using the IP addresses. And, uh, but we can see such attacks depend on timing channels and uh, the cap and the calculated, uh, calculated uh, uh, cache status of resources. So what are the techniques to determine the cache status of targeted resources? I will show you four factor vectors can be used to infer this information. Actually, there, there are also some other, other uh, techniques that can also determine this, uh, the, this information. But we, we will cover these four vectors as the representatives. So first is mirroring the image load time. We first create so the image element for every uh, for for each image or each website's logo, and set so the start time in the attribute, and the end time in the unload event handler, and then we calculate the time interval between the before loading the resource and uh, and uh, the unload event handler fails, and we count this time interval as the image load time. Similarly, we can also uh, measure the page load time for some uh, websites. We first uh, create the iframe element for every uh, website or page, and then set the start time in the attribute, uh, end time in the unload event handler, and calculate the time interval, and then we get the loading time of a specific page. Uh, but this technique is limited by the cross-frame options. If some websites set the cross-frame options to deny, that means the users can't load the websites into iframes, then this vector doesn't work. But we, but we still have the first vector, right? Next, we can also measure the loading time of resources via XML HTTP requests. We set the start time in the unload start um, event and the end time in the unload end event handler and calculate the time interval and get the, the loading time of this specific XML ATP request. Uh, <clears throat> for some resources, because, the, because of the cross origin resource sharing policy, if the resources, do, uh, resources don't have some, set, uh, some configurations for these policies, the, uh, the websites can't load the cross-origin resources via the, this XML ATP request. So last we found the image complete property. Though it's not a timing technique, it can also help the attacker to infer the the cache status of a specific resource. So when the property is true, that means the image is cached in the browser, and otherwise it's not. Uh, it can be used to quickly infer the cache status of large scale Im images. But this feature is only supported by Firefox, Safari, and uh, IE. Now we know the idea of geo-inference attacks and the techniques how to determine the cache status of the targeted resources. So what can we achieve from such attack? We conduct experiments from three granularities, and that is how to infer a user's country, 
city, and even neighborhood. So how to infer a user's country? The answer is Google. It's not directly the attacker Google the user's geolocations in Google.com. The attacker utilized Google.com to indirectly to infer a user's country. We found that Google has 191 regional sites. That means one site represents one country or one region. For example, when we visit Google in Singapore, it will redirect us to Google for Singapore. And the, similarly, Google's logo also contains this country-specific feature. So when a user visits uh, Google's website and then visits a malicious website, the malicious website can just measure loading time of every Google's logo, like Google's um, Google for Canada, Singapore, um, Japan, UK, and uh, Germany, and then determine which logo is cached in the user's browser. Further to infer the user's country, this is the first step. So how to infer a user's city? This time we use Craigslist. We found that Craigslist provides local information, news, advertisements, and also some information about the uh, jobs and housing. It has 712 city-specific sites. So, and uh, also users buy or sell secondhand stuff in their own cities, in their own cities' Craigslist uh, websites. So based on this observation, the attacker actually can directly measure the loading time of every Craigslist city-specific site, and uh, then determine the site, uh, determine the site of Chicago, San Francisco, New York City, Singapore, or Tokyo, which subsite is already cached in the browser. Further, the attacker can infer the user city. And then, can we have uh, even finer granularities than city level? The answer is yes. We utilize Google Maps. We all have this kind of experience. When we open Google Maps and allow this map service website to access our GPS sensors, it will automatically zoom in to our current locations. And after analysis, we found that this uh, map survey website actually consists of many of the map tile images. And we found that for every map tile image, the URL of this image is predictable. And the URL is uh, related to the real geographical coordinates. Further, from this uh, URL, we can infer the streets in, inside the map tiles. So then the, if um, the, the user visits uh, the Google Maps and uh, some uh, websites, and then the malicious website can just measure the, mm -mm, for, first get the user city from the previous two steps, and predict uh, all the map tiles within this city and measure the loading time of every map tile, like these six map tiles uh, from the uh, browser, and determine which map tiles are already cached in the browser. Since these map tiles actually uh, reflect the streets around the user's current location, then the attacker can infer the user's neighborhood. Now we already know the how geo-inference attacks works and the power of such attack to infer users' country, city, and neighborhood. Next, we want to know the prevalence and the reliability of such attacks. We measure a lot of popular websites like Google's website, Craigslist, and Google Maps, and just a uh, like I mentioned in the previous examples, and also the Alexa top, we uh, top websites. 
We also measure the 11 um, popular map service websites like Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, and we change to different five different mystery browsers like Chrome, Firefox, and also we did experiments on Tor browser. And we also switch to five uh, different uh, locations to uh, to test that this attack is reliable in different uh, countries when when the user in uh, when the victim is in different countries. So the first uh, question: How many websites or browsers can be utilized to conduct uh, such attacks? After experiments and the investigation, we found that 60% of 50 uh, uh, top X websites contain the location-related resources. That is like a Google on like Google.com contain the country-specific logo, and also the Taobao has a different uh, subsites in different countries, and also GoDaddy provides more subsites than Taobao.com. And also we found that many websites like Craigslist, they have the, this kind of country-specific URL. And also similar um, to Yahoo and also eBay. And uh, for, for the experiments on all 11 map service websites, <clears throat> we found that these websites, uh, these websites, they contain static map tiles. And uh, all the URLs of these map tiles are predictable and uh, cached in the user's browsers, just like uh, Google Maps. So the attacker can, can just predict all the map tiles uh, within the user city and further to conduct uh, the, the geoinference attacks to infer the, the streets user previously searched all around the user's current location. So how about browsers? We found that for all the mainstream browsers, like Chrome, Firefox, the timing channels are still open on these mainstream browsers. And when we did the experiments, we are surprisingly found that Tor browsers is also partially affected by such attack. And these vulnerable browsers in, uh, include the desktop version and also the mobile version. Now we know many popular websites and browsers can be utilized to conduct such attacks. So what's the reliability? How significant is the time difference between the loading time of resources without cache and with cache? To get to know the answer, we conduct experiments for the previous three examples. We measure loading time without uh, loading time of resources without cache, uh, without cache and with cache. For the first example, Google Google.com example, we can see the loading time uh, of the Google's logo without cache is a uh, green line, and uh, with uh, the the loading time with cache is a black line, because for Google's logo it's just a one small image. So you, we can't clearly, clearly see the, the line of the loading time with cache because it usually takes only around one millisecond. Then we can see the time difference between loading time without cache and with cache is quite significant. It's around 120 milliseconds. That means it's easy for the attacker to distinguish whether this specific uh, country, can, uh, country, uh, country specific logo is cached in the user browser or not. So how about uh, Craigslist, our Craigslist example? Since for Craigslist, uh, we measure the payload time for every Craigslist uh, subsite. Since the, every page consists of uh, many different resources, other than just uh, one image in the first example. So it uh, takes longer time for the attacker to, uh, to, to lo load the, the page. But we can see the time difference between, loading, uh, between the loading time without cache and with cache is still quite significant. It's around 700 milliseconds. 
That means it's also easy for the attacker to distinguish the, the cache status of resources. Then how about the Google Maps? It's similar to the Google's website. The time difference is around 50 milliseconds, and the loading time with cache is also around one millisecond. So it's easy for the attacker to recognize whether MapTile is cached or not. And so how about the mobile browsers? Previously we talked about the, the experiments in the desktop browser. How about mobile browsers? Here we take Craigslist as, a, as an example. We can see the loading time with cache t uh, is larger than the loading time with cache in the PC version. That means because the browser, uh, the mobile browser has limited CPU or the memory comparing to the desktop version. However, the time difference between the loading time without cache and with cache is still quite significant. It's similar to the quick list in the PC version. It's around 700 milliseconds. So, even, uh, so in the mobile browsers, it's also easy for the attacker to conduct uh, this measurement and uh, these attacks. So now we know the power and the prevalence of such uh, geo-inference attacks. So how to protect users from uh, geo-inference attacks? We are looking into several existing defenses and uh, discuss the, the shortcomings of the shortcomings and their ideas of these solutions. So when we figure out uh, this dual inference attack, we first think of whether the private browsing mode can prevent uh, such attacks. Because under private, uh, because it claims that under private browsing modes, browsers don't, uh, don't uh, store caches, histories, and other users' priv uh, private information. However, we found that even under this private browsing mode, browsers only clear browser cache after a user closes the window. That, that means uh, the, this mode disables the disk cache but not the in-memory cache. So when a user visits uh, the websites, uh, or visit uh, the normal websites, and then visit uh, the malicious websites, the malicious website can still query the cache resources from other sites. The browser cache is not separated uh, among these uh, different websites. The browser cache is still shared across all these sites. So the private browsing mode can't protect users from such attacks. Then how about randomizing timing measurements? This idea is to add noise into timing measurement mechanisms, like adding noise, into the date API or other global um, timing APIs. Then the attacker can't precisely measure loading time of different resources. So this can partially defeat our attacks. However, we found that it will also affect web applications' normal functionalities. Like when we visit some page to login or some services, after the the services, the page will redirect us to a, to our profile page within several seconds. If the browser enables this uh, mechanism, the the these web applications normal functionalities can't uh, preserve. So it's an intricate engineering effort. For, for browsers to, um, to have this feature at the same time um, preserving the, the uh, performance and also the responsiveness. So how about Tor Browser? Everyone thinks Tor Browser is private. Actually, Tor Browser is a private preserving version of Firefox and it's based on the Tor network. Tor network is try to hide the users or the initiators' IDs or the IP addresses from the others, uh, other 
adversaries. Actually, after experiment, we found that Tor Browser has done a good job. And that means Tor Browser has, uh, ha provides so-called unlinkabilities, which has an additional ID equal to stream probability to label every cache entry with the top level Windows domain. And then the attack, then the militia website can't measure the loading time of the cache resources from other sites across different tabs. So in this way, the Tor browser can partially um, protect uh, the, our geoinference attacks. However, we found that it's insufficient for some scenarios like mashup websites. So what's, mesh -up, what's a mashup website? Um, for a mashup website, it's a website that uh, mm, contains a lot of embedded uh, websites in different time frames. Since this, all, uh, since this embedded uh, websites in FM, they share the same top level domain, that is a mashup domain. Then the browser cache actually is shared uh, across all these frames. So if a user visit uh, the geo-oriented websites, the, the top browser will store the, <coughs> the geo-related resources into the browser cache and uh, the broad ca cache is shared across all the iframes. So if there is an iframe is malicious, the militia website can also query the, the cache resources from other iframes, further to infer the user's geolocations from these geo-related resources. Then we can see even Tor Browser doesn't uh, perfectly to prevent such attacks. So what's the complete solution? Oh, no, we first showed a demo video of our attacks in Tor Browser. It's in the second part. Okay, let's start. So we visit uh, the, a website in Tor Browser, the latest version is uh, for version four. And we visit uh, the most popular mesh web, uh, website, iGoogle um, portal. Within this website, we can see a lot of other subsites like weather widgets and the uh, US stock uh, markets. They are all in different uh, frames. And uh, we can see there are also many news from different news sites, like from Yahoo News, CNNs, and uh, PC War, some other news sites. Then we visit uh, GoDaddy. Usually when we, uh, yeah, GoDaddy. Since now we are in Singapore, so we want some services for Singaporean people. Then we side the country to Singapore. Then we can see all the logos are in Singapore and all the prices are in Singapore dollars and the services are for Singaporean. Next, we visit uh, the, the attacker's page. To directly show the results, I uh, use a blank page and uh, show the query information. Then after a while, the attacker can infer can infer the user's geolocation the country is in Singapore. Actually, this information is, um, uh, is extracted from the GoDaddy's website. This video is just to show you that Tor Browser is not perfect. Our geoinference attacks can still have the chances to info user geolocations in Tor Browser. Okay, next uh, we want to find a better solution than 
for browser. So we have this idea, segregating browser cache. The basic idea is to deploy the same origin, same origin policies on browser cache. That means for every website, it can't load the uh, cache resources from other sites, either across different times or across iframes. It can only load its own cache resources. We deployed this, uh, this idea in Chromium. Since, the, uh, since under this idea, the malicious website can only access its own cache resources. So this, uh, the, this solution can completely prevent uh, geo-inference attacks. After we deployed this uh, idea and uh, did last go evaluation, we found that this will introduce high performance overhead. And uh, here is the result for Alexa top 100 uh, on websites. We found that this introduced around 50% of performance overhead on average. The reason why, uh, why, why this uh, introduced such um, large performance overhead. After analysis, we found that many popular websites, they include uh, third-party libraries like jQuery uh, from the jQuery.com or from code Google.com. And uh, they also include many static resources like images and uh, scripts from the CDNs. Actually, currently, it's very popular for uh, websites to host uh, the static res uh, uh, resources in CDNs. Thus, the URLs of the resources is, uh, is in CDNs is, are different from the original websites. So these websi uh, so resources can be cached under this mechanism. So I think that's why for all the mainstream browsers, they don't deploy uh, similar region caching policies in the, their current versions. Now we are facing a question, to cache or not to cache? I have two suggestions for websites developers. The first one is uh, no cache for location sensitive resources. That means for the website developers, they can set a cache control as no cache for in the ATP response headers for these resources. We actually did uh, evaluations on um, 20 websites, and we found that this only introduced a small performance overhead. Actually, less than 20% uh, percent of performance overhead to the websites. But for some uh, map service websites, like Google Maps and Yahoo Maps, actually this website uh, will uh, store a large scale of map tiles. So even this, solution will also introduce a large, uh, large performance overhead. So we have the second suggestion. Prefetch the redundant location sensitive resources. That means, uh, for, for example, <coughs> when you visit google.com, the <coughs> Google for Singapore will be, uh, fetched, uh, will be fetched for the page. And then after the page is completely loaded, the website can prefetch some other country-specific logos into the user's browser advance, in advance. And then this solution can prevent the, the attacker to query all the loading times of these on the country-specific logos and to further infer the user geolocations because the attacker gets the locations of all different countries. However, it's still an open challenge to design an efficient and secure caching um, mechanisms in browsers. Here we call for actions for all you hackers and uh, to, to solve such kind of problem. Then, what are the useful informations you can take away from this talk? First, I think you know the idea of timing channels are still open on all the mainstream browsers and even Tor browser. Actually, these timing channels had 
already existed for more than one decade, but no mainstream browsers try to fix it because of the, the performance overhide and the responsiveness. Now you know the power and the prevalence of such attacks. It can infer a user's country, city, neighborhood, and many popular websites and browsers can be utilized to conduct such attacks. So just be careful about it. Then what's the solutions for users? Directly disable browser cache? Or no JavaScript for every page? We just click the button or add some extensions to disable the JavaScript? I think that's too bad. So I also have two suggestions for users. The first one is never give additional permissions to unfamiliar websites. Because if you directly give the uh, permissions like to access our GPS sensors to some uh, untrusted websites, they can directly get to our precise geolocation. And all open um, familiar websites for a long time. You know uh, this geo-inference attack takes some time to measure the loading time of different resources. So if open a web website for a long time, this website, you, you give the opportunity for this website to do some timing channels or other channels to sniff your private information. Just open it after you view the news or some information, just close it. Then, close, uh, then clear cache before and after visiting a website with your private information, like online banking website, all the, like the Google Maps or some Google.com on this website. If you want to protect your geolocations or your credentials, credentials. Okay, that's all my presentations. Uh, thanks for your attentions. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, please. Session, you mean window or? Right. Uh, actually, once you open a new window, the browser cache will be cleared for that window. Right. Other questions? Okay, if you have any questions, you can just uh, um, go here and we can talk about it. Okay, thank you again.